Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel of motorbike nonsense. I've come out for a spot of lunch, but also to very briefly talk about this. Can you see it? I've got a new sat nav. This is the new Garmin Zumo XT2, a replacement for the XT which I've been using for the past year. So I just want to give my very first impressions of this, talk about life in general, maybe some things I've been up to, maybe how I can't clip on because I'm an oaf, and just go for a bit of a ride on my wee beastie here. Um, once I've not dropped it in this car park. I'm at Talk Moto Cafe near Horsham. It's a very cool little motorbikey motor car cafe. It does really good coffee, apparently. I don't drink coffee. Nice pizzas, burgers, etc, etc. And there's the American Diner here as well, which has massively clogged my arteries up today. But anyway, I'm going to ride home and I'm going to take you with me. Let's try not to crash in the car park, eh? But anyway, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I am. It is a lovely, lovely, sunny, warm day. I feel like I've got my heated seat on. I don't. It's just the Lord's globulous ball in the sky dripping his uh, heat energy onto my nutsack. It's really nice. I've been a busy bunny lately. Lots of car stuff. I won't bore you with all of it. And not enough time to go out and ride my motorbike in between illnesses and everything else. So today is the first time I've ridden in a while. First time using the X-T2 out on the road. And I did a video of the Zumo XT end of last year, end of 2022, and do you know what? It kind of blew up. But anyway, Garmin just announced the XT2, and I asked them if I can borrow one to review, and they said yes. So this has got some new quality of life features, basically, that make it a more powerful device and hopefully an easier to use device. The most obvious thing when you get it, if you're coming from the old Zumo XT, is it's a bigger screen. It's six inches now. Um, so it's about, I guess about half an inch bigger than before. But it's really bright as well. They've massively increased the screen brightness, or knitted, if you're being an EV reviewing uh, boring person. But it is noticeably brighter, and although it, the screen is bigger, the actual unit isn't much bigger, so it still fits under the screen of my 1290 Super Adventure. And if you do buy one of these and you're upgrading from the Zumo XT, it comes with its own charging cradle, obviously, and uh, it looks different, slightly different to the one for the old Zumo in terms of its pin layout. Uh, but actually, <laughs> you can use this on the same mounting point as the Zumo XT. So you don't need to do what I do and strip your bike completely down on a sweaty Saturday afternoon to fit an XT2. Although it does have a slightly different usage of pins, this still charges and seems to work just fine on the Zumo XT1 cradle. And it fits in, locks on exactly the same as that. Obviously it's waterproof to IPX7. I can't remember what that means. Probably means it can go underwater and swim with whales, but only for half an hour or something. Thing. and it's just got all the features you would expect but it's got a bunch of new stuff which I'm quite curious about hopefully I've had to try some of it it's got a feature where you can go for a group ride so you can create a group ride and it gives you a code that you give to all your friends and if they've got the same sat nav you'll be able to see each other on your map so you'll be able to see you're like oh no Barry's binned it at the McDonald's roundabout go back and fetch him and pick his R1 up out, the, out of the bushes and things like that or if you're on a big European tour you can see who stopped for an ice cream on a Swiss mountain pass which is a really cool feature um, what else is new on it well, it's got some Michelin fancy road stuff so it will show you scenic roads and it's also got uh, a thing that will show you places and roads that are popular with other motorcyclists if you're in an unfamiliar area of the country or continent you can go and quickly and easily find places that are popular with motorcyclists for better or worse presumably might just take you to all the best accident hotspots in the country i don't know but my first impressions of it have been really good because all garmin stuff now is tied to an account that you have online as soon as i turned this on and logged in all of my old routes and tracks were there from my Zumo XT1. There wasn't any having to like copy stuff off memory cards and switch between different devices. It was all just there waiting for me. So the setup process was super straightforward and super simple. And it was just like my old device. To be fair, I thought I turned on my old device, but it suddenly had a bigger, brighter screen. But whatever. It can still do all the usual Zumo stuff, so it can uh, do adventurous routing between two points and you can adjust how wiggly you want your route to be. It can 
where it can find places, it can link to your headset, it can show you your music that you're playing, so it's like a little infotainment system for your motorbike. And to be honest, I've got really used to that on my Zoomer XT, so it's nice having it bigger, brighter, and more in my face. Now, the one flying the ointment with this is it's brand new, so it's going to be expensive. You're not going to find any discounts on it just yet, I don't think. It is £530 at the moment, uh, brand new from Garmin, and that includes the usual things like the wires you need to attach it to the bike, a ball ram mount so you can stick it on your bike if you don't want to hard mount it like I've done, and obviously user manuals, boxes, etc, etc. The big, big thing about this, which I'm using right now, is the fact that you can finally, finally use an app on your smartphone to program a route whether you you know want to get home from work a different way or if you want to just draw a penis in the countryside on your sat nav not saying that's what i've done but i might have done that you can do the route on your phone on the garmin tread app which is actually okay and then it pings it straight to the sat nav like quicker than i thought it would so i've just done that i just set myself a really fancy twisty route home and it's there straight on the sat nav from my phone i didn't have to faff about there's no connecting to Wi-Fi to get it to work. I don't know how it did it, in fact, but it was there on my sat-nav within seconds of doing it on my phone. And that, for me, is the thing that motorbike sat-navs have been missing for a few generations. And I've just been out for lunch with a guy who's a big cyclist friend, and he's a big believer in Garmin's uh, bicycle uh, bike computers. They've been able to do that for years. Uh, so it is a bit remiss that we've only just getting this now, but hey, it is here now. So well done, Garmin, for giving us bike is the ability to just program uh, routes on the hoof and for me the value there <laughs> the value there is you know you're stopping for lunch in a mcdonald's or something on a big european tour and then you can put out your phone browse for a route make a new route on your phone and send it to the sat nav because browsing making a route manually on a sat nav is never a great experience and yes the processor in this does feel faster and snappier than in the original zoom air xt that's my initial gut feeling anyway so when you're panning around scouting around the map it is not as painful or it wasn't even painful on the zoom but it's even snappier than that um yeah it's just a really nice experience frankly but now you can do it all on your phone and send it to the sat nav super easily so for me that's the killer feature of this now is uh yeah being able to sit there and plot some routes at lunchtime and just go out and do them without having to like oh i need to upload this gpx file to a different app and then send it to my phone by my laptop and then to my sat nav no it all just works to your phone now which is really good and really impressive so yes this isn't my review of it obviously first ride with it but if you've got any questions about this and you want to know about the xt2 you want me to test something out drop me a comment and i will let you know <laughs> it's got a few other little features that i never saw on my zoom xt either when i stopped after my first ride on the way to this cafe at the end of the ride it showed me my maximum acceleration and deceleration in terms of g numbers so yes i only accelerated at 0.8 g so i must try harder it probably shows it to you when you're going along but i've not faffed around with it and there are so many options as with the zoom xt that i doubt i will ever use all of them uh, but you kind of get into a rhythm and you work out what works for you and the foibles um, but yeah as i said i've not experienced enough of this yet to really tell you all of that but yeah that is my first impressions of the garmin zoomer xt2 if you've got any questions as i said drop them down in the comments i'll do my best to answer them over the next couple of months i've got a tour to wales planned i'll be using it for that and i might also try using it on some different motorbikes as well uh, i've hardwired it into this ktm because i own this ktm but i might borrow some other bikes and see how it works on those as well but anyway that's that done let's just have a quick like, chat about life the world in general life has been very lovely lately uh i haven't been out for much motorbike riding i've actually had quite a lot of illnesses but that's quite boring to talk about I went on holiday to what i'm calling tory butlands as people know it's center parts which is very nice and just been having lots of family time doing uh, probably a bit too much car stuff at the moment but there are motorbikes coming back to the channel very soon there'll be a video on the Ducati Scrambler up already maybe soon I've got new Triumph Street Triple RS coming in I've got a Scrambler 1200 XE Chrome Edition coming as well because I just think that bike looks absolutely stunning and um, yeah 
else? I can't remember. There's other stuff as well. We've got BMW GS coming because well, it's been coming for years. But me and the BMW PR man, we keep having WhatsApp battles about who can be most annoying. I'm winning so far. Hooray! Sorry, Neil. And yeah, there's uh, some other stuff. I can't remember. I need to get some new tyres for this before I do any summer touring because my back's knackered after 3,000 miles. Jesus, it's so fast. <laughs> And I'm still resisting buying a Ducati Diavel V4. Thank you to everyone that's watched the video for my Diavel V4. If you're new to the channel, I do these vlogs as well as reviews where I just go around being rude about things. This is a bit of a weird one because it's half a sat now for review, but whatever. Uh, that Ducati Diavel video has kind of taken off more than I thought it would, which is good because that bike is still living rent free in the brain. It is absolutely stunning. If you've not watched that video, you'll see me giggling like I've not giggled in a long time. I wasn't expecting to get on something with a wheelbase that long and uh, be having power wheelies in most of the first four gears and just hamming it around like it's a super naked. I swear to God, it almost handles better than this. It's unreal for something with such a fat rear tire. And then what else I rode? Multistrada V4 Rally, also very impressive. Uh, better as a motorbike than my KTM, but then it costs like 10 grand more, so you would hope so. But that Ducati V4 is something amazing, and when you turn wheelie control fully off, it is absolutely blooming banana splits. <laughs> my bananas that are splitting all over your face as the screen smashes you in the head. It is a hilarious wheelie machine. Makes a great noise, has a big fuel tank now, and costs 25,000 pounds. Yeah, I paid 12 and a half for this, but whatever. And I need to harass KTM to let me finally have a go on an 890 SMT. Uh, but I'm not really sure KTM like me very much these days, so we'll see about that. But otherwise, I'm going to go. This has probably been too waffly and too long. Uh, but yeah, I'll speak to you soon. More bike reviews coming up soon. If there's anything you want me to go and test ride, also let me know in the comments and I'll try to make it happen. And I... Um, yeah, I'm going to go and ride home very legally. And I'm going to go and buy a tempo pillow because I'm feeling a bit fancy today. So it's my treat. It's my treat. A uh, very middle class treat though, isn't it? Gosh, what am I talking about? This is literally pillow talk. Uh, on that note, bye. Bye.